Hi guys and welcome back to Scale Motor. Today we're carrying on with the Tamiya YZF R1. Um, we're going to be getting quite a few things done today. Um, we're going to be sitting it up, we're going to be getting the cooling system done, we're going to be putting the front end on. Um, so yeah, quite a lot to go through. Um, and as always we're going to start off with some priming. Now in the video here I'm priming some 3D printed parts because I recently brought, bought, not brought, bought myself a resin 3D printer. Um, so I was able to knock up a couple of bits and bobs on, uh, on Fusion 360 which would have been maybe a little bit harder to to scratch build like that you can see that's the RAM mount um, which sits on the handlebars to mount my phone. But yeah, we're starting off with the UMP uh, Gloss Black Primer. And we're just going to get a nice thin coat over everything, just so I know I can get even coverage nicely. And then we're going to come in with a couple more coats. And it was three coats for the bigger parts. And that, uh, sorry, yes, three coats for the bigger parts and two coats for the smaller bits and bob. Like this here, this is just the key, which is going to sit in my ignition barrel. Again, this was 3D printed. And now, now we're using the Ultimate White Primer, uh, and we're just gonna be using this to paint uh, another 3D printed part, and this is the coolant expansion tank. Um, this doesn't come molded in the kit, and later on I, I do find out why. But for the time being, we're just gonna paint it up, um, and again, we're using a uh, thin coat to start off with, and then we're gonna build up the coats. The uh, UMP white primer was spit in at this point and that's because recently I had used lacquer paint in the airbrush and I hadn't que cleaned it. I hadn't cleaned it adequately um, and this can cause the um, UMP primers to, to blob up a little. Um, so we got that in the end, um, we're just painting the uh, brake fluid reservoir tanks now. but. Uh, yeah, in the end, we were golden. Uh, and this is our third coat on the the expansion tank. Um, I went a little bit thin on, on the expansion tank because it was printed in grey resin. The white kind of, um, the white primer would have made it too, a little bit too bright. So I went a little bit thinner just to give that kind of translucent kind of feel to it. Then we're coming in with our Alclad. Uh, we're using Alclad Dull Aluminium. Uh, was that Dull Aluminium? I think it was. Uh, we're just going to be spraying bits of the um, uh, bits of the forks. So this is the, uh, the clip-ons where they attach to the actual fork legs. Um, and there was some coolant pipes we were spraying at the beginning. Again, like I always do with Alclad, I've um, I've tightened my trigger tension on the on the air very very easy with the ultimate apex you just take the back off and there's a kind of screw barrel around the needle chuck you just tighten that in for more tension at the trigger and i do that just so i can spray in thinner coats with the uh, with the alclad without kind of hosing it on uh, muscle memory taking over i've also lowered the pressure slightly on my compressor i haven't got an exact value because um, i've got a, a el cheapo electric compressor with no kind of gauge it's just a knob you turn on the side uh, we used the exact same process when it came to spraying the gold titanium um, we used this for the forks uh, just the, the main fork legs i didn't mask anything off because um, i thought my aim would be pretty good with the um, with the low kind of the low pressure and the higher trigger tension and it'll stop most of the overspray um, and I wasn't too bothered about getting paint on the fork stanchions which is the, the kind of middle bit the shinier bit because I was going to I'm going to try something a little different um, a, different for me anyway something I've never tried before so we'll see how that comes out um, so slowly building up the layers with the Alclad and I think I got to about six 
Um, I went a little bit heavier with the last coat because this gold titanium does go a little silver. Um, being a titanium paint is meant to have a slight gold tinge, so I went a bit heavier just to get that gold done. And then we're moving on to Alclad Chrome, probably one of my all-time favourite paints so far. Um, and I'm, I'm using this to spray our uh, our discs. Um, we've done the same on the back, and um, so I did try. Uh, I haven't got a, an adequate rotary tool, um, and I, I did try popping these on um, a motor essentially, and just hooked it up to a battery and put a bit of sandpaper on just to try and get some grooves in the discs, but. They wouldn't go deep enough, and I was a bit worried that if I if I push too hard, I just end up ruining the part. So, so we're going to use a bit of artistic license here and say they're brand new discs. But yeah, I really like how the Alclad works on on the brake discs, and again, we're just slowly building up the layers. Um, I think it was about four in total we had um, on the on the discs. And I wasn't too worried about catching the very edges, um, so going around the diameter, just because um, they, that does get a little dirty, even though they are new discs. Um, but anyway, now we're moving on to the forks, and I'm just grabbing my little Tamiya pointed uh, cotton buds, and we're going to be using some Ushi powder. Um, I was speaking to Claire in uh, one of the hangouts, and she showed some photos of uh, of stuff she'd done with this Ushi powder and I thought it looked absolutely amazing so I just had to order some um, and kind of my first couple of tests I was very 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 surprised um, very pleased it looked really really good so we're going to be using this to try and uh, try and fill in the stanchion area just to get a nice shiny finish it's super simple to use you could just get a bit on uh, the end of a cotton bud and just rub it in I'm using the pointed cotton bud just for accuracy, um, but once kind of we've got it on where you need to go, you can go to the normal size cotton buds, um, and you just get it on and you just buff it, and it'll buff up lovely to a nice shine. Uh, so according to the Ushi website, uh, the Ushi van der Rossen, uh, I believe it is, this stuff can be airbrushed. You just need to kind of put it in. An adequate carrier and you can airbrush it on leave it dry and then uh, once the kind of the thinner or the carrier has evaporated you can buff it up um, it does get absolutely everywhere which is why I've got the the paper down it's just because it is a thin kind of graphite powder and as you can see on my fingers um, it does get on your fingers it looks like I've been uh, looks like I've been sketching all day <laughs> But before you kind of move on to any like freshly painted parts or anything, I would suggest giving your hands a wash. Um, it, it comes off super duper easy, so that's off your hands, nothing to worry about. And I would suggest giving the um, your buffed areas a, a clear coat or a protection layer, definitely. But since I was doing areas like the stanchions and the um, here I'm doing the brake and clutch levers. Since I was doing these, I um, I didn't bother with the protection layer because they're not really going to be touched. And now we're doing a little bit of brush painting. So we're using the Tamiya LP1. Um, this is already thinned quite heavily with um, uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner, just because I've used it quite a bit. Um, and once I've got anything left in the colour cup, it normally goes back into the paint pot. But that didn't cause much of a problem and it went down quite nice. So the middle, uh, so the disc on, um, on these brake discs are a gloss black. Um, so we're just going to come in with our paintbrush and just get that painted up. Next up, another one of my favourite colours is Tamiya Rubber Black. This is not the LP65 that I normally use, it's the XF85. Um, just because I knew I was low, I was in Hobbycraft one day and I saw it. And I um, so we're using this to paint our um, handles, uh, grips. That's it. That's it because they're rubber grips. This gives a kind of muted, kind of on 
almost bluey black, um, which does look a lot like rubber. So we're just gonna brush it on, and it, it doesn't have to be perfect. If there's a little bit of texture to it, um, try try and kind of avoid brush strokes. But if there's a little bit of texture to it, it doesn't really matter because it'll make our our grips look cute. Um, and then just because I missed a bit, we're going over the bar ends and um, where the the brake lever connects to the bar with semi gloss black. X18 and then we use an X13 which is metallic blue and we're just going to be using this for our calipers because um, the, the calipers on these bikes are kind of known as blue spot calipers and that's because there's um, a, a blue spot there's blue spots on them uh, the blue spots are um, on the, on the real calipers, they're like a cap which you can remove with a special tool to make getting the, the brake pistons out easier. Um, we've never had to do it, uh, thankfully, because I, I've rebuilt some calipers before and they they were a nightmare. Um, the, the pistons wouldn't come out, so I had to use compressed air um, to force them out, which was, yeah, that was, that was a... Uh, that was an experience <laughs> but yeah so um, so yeah we're just gonna be painting these blue spots in the metallic blue they have got a silver undercoat um, and I just used LP 11 silver just to kind of um, put it under underneath the blue just so the blue didn't come out that dark so now we're just gonna be adding some depth and dimension and we're using the Tamiya panel line accent color black um, we're going to be quite liberal applying this just because obviously we're going for the used weathered look so um, I want to bring some parts out and, um, and leave some darker areas so we're, we're putting it on quite thick um, we're just going through kind of all the little nooks and crannies and ridges just to try and get a bit of definition and again like I said it is quite thick um, Normally what I do at this stage is have a cotton bud handy just to kind of uh, wick up and wipe off any excess but I'm not too bothered about that at the moment because what I've, I'll do when it's dry is I'll come in with a cotton bud with some, you can use mineral spirits, enamel thinner, lighter fluid, whatever you have which will thin enamel paint or clean enamel paint on the tip of the cotton bud and then, um, and then you can wipe away any excess. Okay, and next up what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the AK uh, True Metal. Um, I forget each time um, it's the True or the Extreme. I think it's the True Metal uh, and it's like a waxy kind of paint. And I have to use this for highlights just to make metal parts look um, weathered and, and used. Um, so here it is. It's super simple to use. Um, it's good for covering large areas as well. It's just I don't generally use it for that because I use the more... Um, like the owl clad the metallic paints but I'm just gonna rub a little bit on the brush um, and dab the vast majority of it off keep going uh, you might think oh that's okay that's enough do a little bit more because it always comes out a uh, a little bit more on the parts and we're just gonna dry but see there we go you can see it come out a little bit too much um, but that's fine it'll look like a bit corrosion-y I suppose so what we do now is dry brushing over, trying to get like the edges, anything that would see wear. Um, I'm just trying to kind of dab it around uh, the keyhole because um, the previous owner of the bike had a key with a key ring on, and you could see where it had been scratching away at the top yoke, um, kind of in a circular pattern. So I tried a little to replicate that it's not too pronounced on the actual bike um, so you know I, I haven't got overboard but we're just gonna go around all the kind of black um, and darker metal parts um, well we're gonna go through all of them really apart from the wheels just to hit the edges just to show a bit of wear okay and now we just uh, start to fit bits on uh, this is a coolant pipe on the side this was um, with the ends 
sorry, the, the back end towards the engine was painted with the dull aluminium from Alclad and I brush painted the, um, the rubber horsey part in rubber black. We went uh, quite thick with the rubber black just so we could give a bit of texture. And now we're just popping on our, our radiator. I'm just checking kind of for clearance and see what bits attach. Um, again, apologies, I'm uh, slightly out of shot. I recently moved around my bench and um, I've, I've moved my camera mount slightly, so I'm still getting used to it. Um, but I do notice the majority of the time and jump back in to shot. So with, uh, with the radiator, I was just test fitting um, and the only bit I popped some glue on was where it attaches to this pipe because that has to be a nice clean fit um, on the top it doesn't really matter too much um, because it does it slightly clips in quite nicely and once it's kind of pushed back and held on by that the glue on that pipe it'll uh, it'll hold it in place so it's not uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the glue on the top And now we're just going to glue our coolant bottle on. Its placement is, was pretty easy for this. I know that it ran from the top of the radiator down to wherever. So I just kind of splotched some glue along um, and just uh, popped them on. So yeah, you can see it does poke out quite a bit and it, it is kind of the dimensions are, are based on the actual one. So it is to scale, um, but it does protrude a bit. So I can see why they left it out because fitting the fairings would be quite a struggle um, without kind of knocking that off, um, which which we did see later on. Um, so now we're just gluing on our our brake discs, and there's three locating points on the back of the disc and three holes in the the hub of the wheel so super simple to get them lined up um, and just pop dab in little bits of glue on all our kind of holes and also on a mated surface just to make sure we've got a nice clean hold because if those if the calipers are slightly off and the wheel turns um, it can kind of knock the disc off which is really annoying um, Speaking of calipers, we're now adding the, the forks. Um, the screws are uh, normally in the Tamiya instructions, there you have a side profile of the screw to scale. Um, but for a couple of the screws and, and kind of vinyl pipes in this kit, that wasn't there. So just watch out for that, just measure, just make sure you've got the right one because uh, I believe I did cut out where I try and attach the forks to the bike here and I used the wrong screw and it was about it was about 10 mil too long um, and I was like why is this loose and then I realized the screw was poking into the top of the tire uh, but yeah so just just be careful of that and make sure you are using the right ones because you don't want to come to a part later in the build where you're like I've got the wrong screw and you don't know which one it was because you take up take apart the whole thing So now we're just adding the, the bars. Uh, because of the paint, they fit onto the kind of handlebars, fit onto the clip ons really, really tightly. Um, so I didn't glue them, um, and you'll be able to see later it does start to wobble slightly. So I did end up taking them off and just dabbing a tiny, tiny bit of super glue in there just to make sure it held. And there we are, we've, uh, we've got the forks on um, and the front end. Um, I, I really really like this part of the build um, when it's all kind of up on its feet shall we say and you can really tell the difference in the, the front and rear at the moment because the rear's got the weather in and the front is is clean <laughs> the wheels so that there, there is a stark difference but here's another 3d printed part and this is the this is the ram mount I was talking about previously um, 
I did print it all as one part, but it was quite brittle, so the top kind of popped off. But um, but that's fine. That could be glued back on. Now this is um, this mounts to the um, the steering stem, which on most bikes will have a hole going down the centre shaft, um, and in real life it's got like an expanding rubber kind of grommet when you tighten the, your your bolt um, on top the grommet it can, and holds it in um, with this just a dab of super glue uh, <laughs> the angle didn't really matter too much because it is an adjustable piece in real life um, and it does it does wobble about if it's not tightened so I wasn't too too bothered about getting it right I just wanted to make sure that it would clear the the fair ends and I did test fit it beforehand when it was all one piece um, so I've got the kind of the, the angle um, we need I've got like a, a mental reference make sure it's orientated the right way um, because it will be really, really hard to see, but on the top of the end of each corner, there is a, a very small R logo it's for RAM mount, which um, which I want to say is moulded in, but it's not as printed in. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I got those the right way round. And now we're on to uh, wiring it up, basically. Um, we're doing the coolant pipes, the throttle cable and the the brake cables. So the coolant pipes I just used the, the thicker vinyl tubing which comes with the uh, comes with the kit. This does the job adequately um, and with a little bit of weathering it, it, they look bob on like compared to the real um, compared to the real part they look uh, they look great. So we'll just Cut in the sizes in the manual. I like I always <clears throat> try that one again. I always like to cut uh, about a millimeter or two over just to make sure I've I've got the right length because um, you can always take away and cut in an extra piece is just a waste. So yeah, just cut a, a little bit extra. Um, if it is a little bit too long, it's it's not really going to be noticeable anyway. Um, Oh, yeah, don't forget to throw it across the bench. Um, so I'm using um, my, my little bike stand there is just packing peanuts, which I was sitting in the UMP live show one day, um, sorry, the ISM live show one day, and um, opened a parcel I had from UMP, and Paul mentioned that those packing peanuts, if you wet them, they'll stick together. So I made about... 50 little, uh, little polystyrene men um, the majority of them are gone in the bin but this one I realised was actually quite good for, for resting the bike on um, I can get some different angles I don't have to rest it on the bench uh, and yeah he likes to sit on the bike when I take photos as well which you'll, uh, which you'll see later on um, but yeah so <laughs> we're just installing the cooling system now um, the thermostat and thermostat housing on this bike is separate from the engine. I know a lot of them are bolted straight to the block, but this has got a, um, a separate piece which sits just above the head. Um, that was that was a bit of a nightmare to fit later on um, because we'd added a little bit more and it probably should have been done beforehand. But I would just add in um, coolant overflow um, an overflow pipe and we're, we're kind of piping up the, the expansion tank up to where it needs to go um, and it'll connect to the the spout um, on the radiator because that's where when the coolant overflows it goes um, it expands down a pipe and in the neck of the of the radiator and it'll go into the overflow uh, bottle or the expansion tank whatever you want to call it and then if it expands more um, or there's too much it'll come up um, and it'll expand in the 
expansion tank i guess that's why they call it the expansion tank um and it will come out of an overflow tube then which is uh just at the top and then it, it literally it'll, it'll just leak it'll just leak out through wherever you've got that routed so yeah there were quite a few little uh little wires and tubing i used i think it's some leftover um, top studio detailing wire from a previous super detail kit um, the top studio super detail kits are great they always come with a little bit extra and uh, that's my key it fell off um, they always come with a little bit extra and um, they could the, the leftover could be used for a variety of stuff that's why I love them I've got another one on the way for a future video build with um, with Tamiya 05 um, Rossi bike, so that's going to be interesting. Um, I've gone all out with that. I've got a super detail kit coming. I've got a fork set. I've got a chain set um, of Top Studio, uh, apart from the fork set with Tamiya. But yeah, keep an eye out for that because that is going to be a, a great video build. Okay, once we're done with that, it was time to start on our clutch cable. And for this, I opted to use some actual cable. Um, when I first got the bike, um, it was it was amazing. Um, then I had a couple of issues with uh, with the clutch cable. Um, and on the way to work one day, I was literally outside work, about to turn into the car park. I was at a red light, pulled off, and uh, the cable just popped. Um, so my bike was kind of stuck. Um, so yeah I had to leave the bike in, in the underground car park and work overnight and come in the next day on my day off with my tools and, and change that in the car park which was fun and then um, a couple of days later the uh, the same thing happened in pretty much the same place so <laughs> at that point I got picked up in a van um, and just fixed it at home but uh, that was just because the um, the clutch cable was pretty old <clears throat> and the sheathing had kind of moved, I want to say, so the clutch cable was rubbing on the bracket, uh, which was just, you know, overuse. Um, it was weakening it, which was making it pop, um, it was causing kind of like a pinch point. Um, but I wanted to kind of replicate that... Um, original kind of state of the sheathing moved so we put the sheet we've used some tamiya vinyl tubing and put some cable wire which i got from prime miniatures i'll leave a link for that down in the description um through the tube and it's just protruding out the end a little bit more than it would in real life um so yeah um i had to look at a few different I had to look at the workshop manual and everything just to find out exactly how this was routed because I know it's routed differently on my bike now. I've got it away from the radiator and the headers just because I didn't want to burn anything or boil out any of the, the lubricant in there. So I, I rerouted it. But, um, but yeah, so I looked at the workshop manual, which I have, just to make sure I was routing this the right way. Um, and then it was just... Uh, um, it's just glued to the the clutch lever on the on the bars and then we glued it to the little mechanism we made previously as you can see here for the clutch actuator Okay, and now I moved on to some weathering and for this I wanted to take the wheel off because I didn't want to weather areas around the wheel which didn't want weathering. So we're going to use the same process on the front wheel and tyre as we did for the rear. Um, and in this case we're actually actually going to use some, some different bits and bobs. So first off we're getting the, um, we're going to get the tyre sanded. We're going to be using the UMP sanders for this. Um, we just want to get rid of a little bit of that seam line that's going down the middle. And we also want to um, give the kind of effect of a used tyre. 
Um, I'm just off camera at the moment, just giving that uh, that sander a wipe because it is full of resin from 3D printing. Um, so yeah, we're just going to sand away and you don't have to be too careful with this, you just want to make sure you don't kind of hit your discs or the rim of your wheel. Just went all the way around with that sander and slightly down the sides. And then first off we grabbed the Alclad Dust Pigment. Um, this was an accidental purchase but I was glad I did purchase it. Um, and it looks like I am really struggling but I'm not. I'm just trying to open it slowly because the lids are here and they can, I can kind of suddenly release which isn't something you want because you'll have dust pigment everywhere and this can be a nightmare to clean up. So we're just applying it very very liberally around the the tire. Um, it could be wiped off with a, a wet cotton bud um, so I wasn't too too worried about uh, about going over to make sure that I got some in the in the tread on the tire. Um, um, for this I'm using an old brush which I cut half the bristles off and it, I found it really really good for applying these dusty pigments because once you dip it in the pigment, the, the pigment kind of clings to the inside of the brush um, and it's got kind of a high contact area. Uh, we're also going to go around the actual wheel. The wheel on the front can get quite grubby because it's, it's straight up against the element um, and the road salt. We've also got brake dust to, uh, to worry about. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we've got some, some cotton buds there which we use to remove some of the excess pigment. I'm just trying to make sure that a lot of that dust is out and then we're going to use the ultimate pigments. Um, we're going to use the black. This stuff is absolutely excellent. It's super duper fine, so it can get everywhere. And if you don't notice it on your bench and you wipe your arm through it, you'll have streaks up your arm and streaks on the bench. Um, but we're just going to use to darken up our calipers. Uh, not a carpet, sorry, out discs just to give that kind of slightly used effect. Um, and what I found with this pigment is if you give it a shake, some of it settles in the lid, um, and you can use that then to add small amounts of pigment. Um, if you want to add bigger areas and you want to go darker, or you know, you, you want to use a bit more, you can by all means just dab into the actual pigment pot but the, these pots are so much better than that hourclad one because there's just a twist top um, there's no worry of it going everywhere unless you open it upside down for some reason um, but yeah um, I'm really really impressed about the full range and, and they are great and as you can see they all over my hands and all over my bench and now we're just gonna go around and do some very select areas um, we're gonna add some rust we're using the Vallejo Model Air Rust Set. Um, I found this brush paints actually really well, even though it's meant for airbrushing. Um, but we're just going to get a very, very little bit on the tip of our brush, and we're just going to go over the caliber sliding pins, uh, any bolts which which may rust for being there for a while. And we're just going to add the darker Vallejo car first, and then we're going to kind of. Uh, I guess stipple the lighter colour over the top. You can see in the background there another um, UMP pigment and that's the, the green, I think it's moss. Um, and I just used that on the coolant overflow bottle just to give the illusion of some sort of green liquid in there because I totally forgot about the actual liquid inside. Even though currently my bike is having some issues with the cooling system. Um, which I'm still trying to hunt down and diagnose um, once or twice it has and blown the lid off the expansion tank which is just kind of like a rubber press fit lid and it just pops out um, so yeah there's no coolant in there now it's just bottled water from the shop because because um, I went to pick my girlfriend up from work um, and I got covered in boiling hot water and coolant where the lid popped off and the, the kind of hose they normally have at the shop wasn't working so I had to go inside and buy a bottle of a bottle of water um, to have some coolant for the way home. So yeah we've got the and now we are 
doing the bar ends um, and the, the bolts which hold the overflow on the side of the radiator. Bar ends can get scuffed and knocked and that's kind of why they're there. Um, my ones, they are the paint is chipped, they are scratched, they are a bit rusty because they've been on there a while. Um, and the problem with um, old bar ends is they, they fit kind of the same as that ram mount with like an expander on the inside. Um, at least some do. Uh, some they've got like a plug with a threaded hole welded on the inside of the actual handlebar. Whatever the, whatever way these are fitted, there's a bit of <clears throat> a bit of an issue um, when I try to undo them. The bolts just turn and turn and turn, and I can't get them off um, without mincing whatever's on the inside. So I've left them on for the time being until I get some new clip-ons. Um, but yeah, I like them. I like them. It gives the bike a little bit of character. <laughs> Have we done the same rust effect on the the coolant pipe attaching to the engine here? Because this does get grubby and wet and then we just used the a little bit of kitchen sponge uh, ripped off to kind of dab and that'll stipple the paint and stop it making look look stop it make it stop looking so uniform um, and it'll give that kind of random effect to it so now we started with braille, and I'm using braided cable again from prime miniatures this is not quite seven millimeter diameter um, so this stuff is is really cool um, it is essentially just a braided cable and it does have a cable running up through the middle with a clear sheath um, around and in the end this is all we ended up using because it, it looked a bit out of place with the um, it looked a bit thick with the actual braiding on the outside and it did look like um, once cut it that did look like silver braided cables uh, which I have on the front of the bike. Now we 3D printed some um, brake cable brackets which attach to the fork legs um, and the, uh, the front um, the front mudguard um, or the front fender. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just chopping a little bit of the, the braided cable. You can see me trying to kind of work it out to make it look good um, until we just decided to rip the outside off. Um, so I chopped a little bit um, to go from the banjo bolt, which I again was 3D printed, to the the bracket, and then the rest, uh, another piece of cable, then will go from the, the brake cable bracket right up to the actual um, master cylinder at the handlebars um, and just to connect to the master cylinder we use a little bit of heat shrink cable here um, again this is left over from top studio um, and we just heat it up so it'll shrink around the end and then we're just going to chop a bit off so we've got a hole basically and we can use this then for um, to kind of push on to the, the little nubbin that they have on the the master cylinder which you would use to connect the vinyl cables to. And we've done the same on the very very ends which connect to the banjo bolts just because on the actual um, the, the actual braided cables do have a rubber black bit on the end, so we'll try to replicate that too. It was awfully fiddly. And then all we've done is um, so we attach that small bit of braided cable to the bracket first just so we can slide it over the banjo bolt um, with a little bit of super glue on and then once it's dried on the banjo bolt we could move the the actual bracket into place where it needed to be um, without having to try and line up both at the same time.
And then lastly, we're on to the main part of the brake cable, which, as you can see here, just goes on to the little kind of the little nubbins on the master cylinder. And then this routes down through the forks around to the, the calipers. I left it unglued from the, the little brackets at the moment because I know I knew at this stage that I had to take the wheel off um, the, the front fender on when that was all painted up. So we just kind of lined it up just to make sure everything kind of goes where it needs to go and then we left it to it. So yeah, there we are. That's this part all done and dusted. Um, I'm just going to run through a couple of photos uh, of the progress. Uh, you see some of the 3D printed parts, uh, like the RAM mount there, and there's a key. Um, you'll see the, the coolant bottle as well. Uh, there it is. But I, like I say, at the end of every single video, I have really, really enjoyed doing this. Um, this one more so, uh, just because I'm trying a lot of new techniques and I'm using the weathering and I'm really, really, really enjoying um, the weathering. Even though I am going a little bit overboard in some places, it is. Uh, it does still look pretty cool to my eye. Um, and I think because it's my actual bike, um, that helps too. I'm doing the same scheme as the very first bike that I built as well so at the end there'll be some pictures of the pair of them together just to see what they look like together and how far I've come. But um, yeah in the meantime if you've enjoyed uh, watching as much as uh, as I've enjoyed building then please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Um, and there you could see um, I had to try the fairings on. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, have a great day, and stay safe.